So far in this class, we've tackled the simple harmonic oscillator, the damped harmonic oscillator, and the driven harmonic oscillator using Lagrangian mechanics. Today, we're going to do the damped and driven harmonic oscillator using Lagrangian mechanics. Okay, so we'll just do a simple one-dimensional oscillator. Mass M, spring constant K. There will be a driving force, F drive, which is gonna be F zero sine gamma T. And then there's going to be a, uh, could imagine that this whole spring is submerged in water. Maybe I should do that. Underwater. And so there's going to be a damping force equal to negative some constant B times the velocity x dot. Okay, so this is the system that we want to address. Uh, but before we get to that, uh, let's look back at all of the other Euler-Lagrange equations that we've worked with. So for the simple harmonic oscillator, we had this basic Euler-Lagrange. Then for the damped harmonic oscillator, we took the same equation, but we added another term That was the damp term, damping. And remember that there was a, a caveat on this that um, it gets more complicated in more than in extra dimensions, I'll say. So two or three dimensions. If your damping force has mixed velocity terms, for example, if the force in the x direction depends on the velocity in the y direction, then your the right hand side can't just be the damping force line. So we, we discussed that in a previous video. Then we saw the driven harmonic oscillator. And then again, we took our base Euler Lagrange equation. So these are all Euler Lagrange. And then instead of a damping term, we had we added a driving term. And in a previous video, I showed you how to treat a sinusoidal driving term. So now let's do a damped and driven harmonic oscillator. Okay, and so just like we added extra terms for the damped or driven, we'll just add both of those terms for the damped and driven. So F drive plus F damped. 
All right. So let's write that down. So x double dot plus k over n equals negative b over n x dot plus the driving force f0 sine gamma t. Okay. And so let's get all the x dots and double dot terms on one side. All right, and so if you remember uh, when we talked about the driving force, because this force on the right hand side um, doesn't depend on the, um, the position, this second order differential equation is tough to solve. And the way that we solve it is by finding the homogeneous solution and adding a particular solution. And so just like we did with the driven, just the driven system with the driven damped system, now we set the driving force equal to zero and we just just have to solve this uh, regular second order differential equation. Okay, and we've seen uh, the solution to this before. Uh, so this solution is for the homogeneous uh, term is a e to the minus beta t cosine of omega 1 t. And then we've defined some new terms here. So the, the beta term is uh, b over 2m b omega 1 term is square root of omega naught squared minus beta squared. And then omega naught is the resonant frequency of just the base simple harmonic oscillator system, square root k over m. Okay, so that's our homogeneous solution. Uh, but what about our particular solution? So our particular solution is going to look something like this. X as a function of time equals F0 over square root of omega naught squared minus gamma squared squared plus four beta squared gamma squared sine of gamma t minus five. And so just like the driven oscillator that wasn't damped, this phi phase term is going to have a physical meaning. And that's going to be inverse tangent of two beta gamma over omega naught squared minus gamma squared. Uh, so what this phase shift term is uh, telling us is that the if you are start driving this oscillator with some sine force, then uh, it's going to take uh, 
whether, how long it takes for it to start going at this driving force is going to depend on the damping force and the um, resonant frequency of the um, base simple harmonic oscillator system, which kind of makes sense intuitively. Now, uh, so that's our particular solution. So our total solution, so our solution to the damped and driven harmonic oscillator is going to be the homogeneous part plus the particular solution. Okay, so our homogeneous part was a e to the minus beta t cosine of omega one t and then our particular solution that we just wrote down is f zero over omega naught squared minus gamma squared plus four beta squared gamma squared times sine of gamma t. So now instead of taking a bunch of derivatives to show that this is the right solution, which I encourage you to do on your own, I'll instead show how using this solution of all of the terms together, we can uh, show that this is, uh, for example, if we take away the damping, we can show that this equation equals exactly the solution that we found for just the driven oscillator. And so we'll go through several, several of those examples. Okay, so our uh, damped and driven solution was here. So this is our solution that we're working from. Oops. Okay. And now what if we wanted to uh, do the example that I said? So let's take beta equals zero or uh, lowercase b equals zero. So that was the term that governed the damping force. Uh, so this is no damping. And so we should get the uh, the driven harmonic oscillator solution. So let's see if we do. So looking back at this equation, so replace all of your betas with zero. So we get a e to the minus zero t cosine of omega one t. And I'll replace, I'll show the what we do with the omega one term at the end. Plus f zero over omega naught squared minus gamma squared plus four beta squared gamma squared and then placing that beta with zero sine of gamma t no oh, this should be I left out the plus phi here okay so you see that this a e to the so e to the zero is one 
So this is just a cosine of omega one t. Then the second term is omega naught squared minus gamma squared sine of gamma t. And that's because, so the phi term was two beta gamma over omega naught squared gamma squared. So if you plug in for phi of beta equals zero, then you just get zero. So there's no phase shift uh, that we have to worry about. Then the, okay, so we got a cosine of omega one t plus F zero over omega naught squared minus gamma squared sine gamma t. So if you remember omega one is square root of omega naught squared minus beta squared, but beta is zero. So if we set that equal to zero, we get square root of omega naught squared, which is just omega naught. So our final solution is x as a function of t equals a cosine of omega naught t plus f zero over omega naught squared minus gamma squared sine of gamma t. And so this is the same solution as the driven harmonic oscillator that we got in a previous lecture. And then again, there's a caveat here that um, you need a different solution for uh, omega naught equals gamma. Okay. So that was one check. Now let's check the um, just the damped oscillator. So we start with this full equation, uh, but now we set F zero equal to zero and we want or we should get, should get just the damped solution. Okay, so if we look back here, um, basically this whole second term, if we set F zero equal to zero goes away. And so we get X as a function of T equals A e to the minus beta t cosine of omega one t. And this is of course the uh, correct solution for the damped harmonic oscillator. So, so far this total solution for the damped and driven harmonic oscillator has captured the solutions for the damped oscillator and the driven oscillator. Uh, when we take those uh, conditions where, for example, setting B or beta equal to zero and here setting the driving force equal to zero. So now there's one last uh, thing to check. So does this capture the simple harmonic oscillator solution. And so that would be setting B equal to zero, which would be the same as setting beta equal to zero. And F zero equal to zero. 
And so we want this to equal our nice simple harmonic oscillator solution. Okay. So this is what we start with. So x of t equals a e to the minus beta t cosine of omega 1 t plus square root of, oh, not square root, f0 over omega naught squared minus gamma squared plus or beta squared gamma squared sine of gamma t plus five. Okay. So if we set F zero equal to zero, then this whole term goes away. If we set beta equal to zero, this goes to one. And then omega naught or omega one goes to omega naught. And so x of t equals a cosine of omega naught t, which is the correct solution for a simple harmonic oscillator. So this uh, equation in the box is the general solution for a harmonic oscillator uh, that's driven by the sinusoidal force. And so we've seen that you can now take that, uh, this general equation and recover the solutions for just the driven oscillator, just the damped oscillator, and also the simple harmonic oscillator. Uh, so this is a good general equation to, to keep in mind. This has been a Dr. Strassbau lecture. Keep the credentials. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell for notifications.